Okay, so here we go for part two of the video. I thought I was going to have my face down there in the corner, but it disappeared. Uh, well, we'll live with that. Okay, so I'm picking up where we left off in terms of what goes into your speeches. Uh, reference page at the end, we talked about that. Uh, students need to keep speeches within the assigned time frames. That means both don't make it too short and don't make it too long. The informative speech is going to be five to six minutes. The persuasive speech is going to be six to eight minutes, a little bit longer, but there's a little bit more involved with the persuasive speeches. Please don't make them too short. If they are too short, you won't get credit or I will have you redo the assignment. So five minutes minimum and six minutes max for the first and six to eight for the second. So please be in that time frame. People tend to be going short and you can know exactly how long your speech is going to be by, by practicing a lot. Uh, significant research. Realize this is a research-based speech assignment. You are going to find plenty of material to back up what you say. I, I do care about your opinion, but not so much in these speeches. I want you to share your experiences, but that's not research. Research is books and articles, videos, uh, interviews with experts in the field, and you're going to have plenty of that, both reflected in what we call inline citations, where you're going to say something like, according to John Smith in his 2014 book, Taking Classes Online, uh, he says 84% of classes in the fall of 2020 will be online, period. So I made that up, but you get the idea. I included four elements in there. Who said it, where they said it, when they said it, that year of publication, and what they said. You're going to have five of those in your informative speech and six of them in your persuasive speech. Don't leave those out as that tells us you did the research and it backs up and supports your uh, statements and comments in your speech. More about that later. Uh, we're not doing video or audio visual aids in this speech. We're just going to use a PowerPoint. If we do the videos, it just makes things way too complicated for a uh, speech class online because I want to see you, not the PowerPoint. So that's not, but you're going to send it to me. And then uh, same with the preparation outline, and I will review it and make it part of your grade. It's just not going to be visible while you are presenting. Unless you can figure out a way to maybe have your computer screen in the background and you're editing, you know, moving along while you're doing it. If you can work it in, great. But I want to see you primarily and your PowerPoint secondarily. But if you can do it, great. But don't let it replace you in the video. Uh, Dress, you want to dress appropriately to your speech topic, or what would you wear to a job interview? But no baseball caps, no sweatpants, no, uh, unless you're doing a speech on working out, maybe then sweatpants would be appropriate. But dress what you would wear to an interview, not t shirts, uh, nothing like that. Okay. Quizzes and exams, we will have five quizzes during the semester, or assignment substitutes for a quiz. So you're going to have a quiz on the syllabus. You're going to have one on online presentations. Uh, I've got a couple there. So there's going to be five of those. They probably will not. There might be one or two of them true, false, or multiple choice or something like that. But I'm trying to make them a little bit more something different. And then you will have a final exam uh, over lots of material covered in the course and we'll talk about that more later okay evaluating i still don't have this all the way worked out but you're going to be evaluating each other i have forms that you're going to post you're not going to send them to me but you are going to post them so that your uh person you're interviewing can see those evaluations we 
can learn a lot from evaluations. I will evaluate your speeches in grading, but you can also get peer evaluations so you can know what your uh, peers are thinking. There's an old phrase I love. It says, feedback is the breakfast of champions. If you want to learn and you want to grow, you want to get feedback on whatever it is that you're trying to excel at doing. And I know we can be, uh, I know some people don't like the word sensitive uh, to feedback and it might, you know, our feelings get hurt or whatever, but you got to have feedback so you can correct and get better. And we want to do, always do feedback. The word, two words I use are honesty balanced with kindness. We can be honest and say something is not that good or needs to be improved, but a lot of it is in how we say it. Can you say it in a kind way and not be brutal? We're not trying to hurt each other. We're trying to help each other. So that's why we do evaluations. And then learning how to evaluate uh, is a great skill. It calls for critical thinking that we're not just impressed with the pretty lights or the colors, but we are listening for content. And was it clear? Was it strong? Was it persuasive? Was it informative? Did they do a good job? So we're developing our critical thinking and the textbook talks about critical thinking skills, which is something we want to develop. And then you're going to be doing a pre a evaluation of an outside speaker where we're going to do a, uh, you're going to watch, you know, we have to, this way we have to, although things are opening now, so it may be different. I just thought about that. Uh, quite often people will go to their place of worship and evaluate the speaker, or you can do it online for now. I'll probably go back to offline uh, present because it's better to be in the room with the presenter. I prefer that. Uh, I know online is easier, but you just don't get all the details of how was the temperature in the room, how was the lighting, what was the feel, what was the audience like, were they rowdy, were they quiet, were they, uh, you know, they'll be more evenly spaced out, I guess, in the next several months. But that's all part of the evaluation. So anyway, I may need to adjust that as we work our way through uh, COVID-19. Okay, there are the assignments and their grading point value. And you'll notice that the uh, three main speeches is worth uh, 300 points out of 555. That's a lot. You add in the two self-evaluations of 50 points each. That's Four, uh, what did I say? 400 out of 555. So speeches carry a lot of weight, but you can see it all uh, spaced out there. And then there's the grading scale. It's just a straight scale. Now, just so you know, if you get an 88.9, I round it up to an 89, but that is still a B plus that doesn't round up to an A minus. If you get an 89.3, I won't necessarily round it up to a 90. If it's an 89.5, absolutely it will go up to a 90. So I'm pretty stringent on that. And don't feel bad if I don't grade you up as you might feel I should. But I don't do that. So, you know, it's pretty straightforward. I round up, but whatever the rounding up ends ends up with, that's the grade. Okay, uh, statement about plagiarism and academic integrity. Do your own work. We have a portion in the textbook on plagiarism, and I talk about it in my uh, lecture, but do your own work. Don't go online and order a speech. Don't borrow your cousin's speech from their speech class. You do your own work. I may not be able to spot it, that it's plagiarism, but don't do it. And then, the, But the other part is you've got to give credit from where you get your sources. That is one of the important things about inline citations and all that information I expect you to uh, share with us. It gives full ability for us to look up and read John Smith's book or Katie Jones' article on... Um, the 19, what was it, 1919 Spanish flu situation. Give us 
the credit. Sometimes we just get lazy and we don't do it or we forgot to look it up and we're not going to bother. But give it credit because that is a form of plagiarism of not giving credit. Even though you're not intending to take credit for the work, if you don't tell us where it came from, we're going to assume it came from you, but we're going to kind of know that you might not be an expert on the 1919 Spanish flu to know that information. So we're going to know you probably got it from somewhere, but you didn't tell us where. So avoid plagiarism, uh, support academic integrity, and just tell us where you got the material. Easy. Okay, and now the next section is there on resources. I'm going to skip that. If, But look through that and see if there's anything there for you. Okay, then I give you a page to keep track of your scores. You don't need to turn this in at all. It's just all for you to keep track of where you're at with the different assignments. And I, I might update that page if I notice that something is not there that sh shouldn't be there any longer. Attendance is there. I see attendance. <coughs> so I got to take that out. I'm not going to have attendance. Okay, then an extra credit. You're going to keep track of your own extra credit for the semester. Maybe worth up to 25. I think it will be. Uh, but we have things in there like, you know, keeping track of, or keeping time of other people's speeches. And we don't do that here. So there's not as many items available. Outs additional outside speaker evaluation, uh, those kinds of things are there. But anyway, you're going to turn this page into me or a copy of it at the end of the semester. I do not keep track of your extra credit. And I expect you to turn in this page, not sending me a number, but you're going to fill out this page accordingly and send it to me because you may not get the extra credit points if you don't. So. Remember that. That'll be due on the day of your final exam. Next is an agreement. This I definitely have to redo, and so ignore this for now. But this is an agreement that you have the resources. Now, notice this one has, um, I think this one might be okay, but it says I have online access to the text syllabus, which if you're reading this, you probably do. Uh, you've received the syllabus, and you can ask questions about it. Uh, you know how to access Canvas, which again, if you're watching this video, you do know how. Um, you know how to access your school email, and you have a full access to the class textbook. Now, by access, ideally, you would have purchased the textbook, the hard copy, and have it in front of you, or an online copy. I'm still a uh, textbook guy. If I turn my camera around and showed you I have a whole wall of books uh, that are from my uh, former days uh, but these are the ones in my office I have a whole shed of books that I'll probably get rid of but I love books I buy still buy a lot of books but anyway online books that's not my thing but that's a lot cheaper and more easily accessible so that may work out very well for you uh, you can borrow a textbook from somebody but uh, but you know, having your own copy always available to you is kind of the expectation. And so if you're borrowing somebody else's textbook in this class, for example, or in another class at the same time, you may not have access to it when you need to complete an assignment. So not having access to the book to do an assignment, uh, that's going to be on you. So you want to make sure you have access. Uh, and then, so I guess that's that. So you're going to sign that and send me a digital copy and again i gave extra crowd gave you 2.5 points extra credit for actually i'm gonna all move it up to oh five points extra credit if you're gonna sign this show me a picture of it and i'll just delete the picture afterward or we'll have you post it somewhere on the site but i want to see that you're acknowledging this is just the contract i like watching judge judy so she'll talk a lot about contracts this is the contract this is what you're going to do and this is what I know that so when I ask for an assignment or a reading, I know that you have access to the resources you need to complete the assignment. And and so if you say, well, I didn't have the textbook, that's I mean, I'm not I don't want to say too bad, but <laughs> that's kind of what it is. That's on you. So anyway, uh, online access is, like I said, I think it's fairly cheap. And it is certainly accessible. So that may be an option for you. I'm not wild about it, but that's okay. 
Okay, so let's see. Then the uh, calendar has everything lined out. Uh, and there, uh, the first thing is that everything is due on 1159 on the final day of the week, which is Sunday night. And then kind of the world starts over again, 12 o'clock, 12.01 on Monday, 12.01 a.m. on Mondays, and we start over for the week. And then um, your speech video submissions of your speeches are in bold throughout the outline. You'll see them there at different places. So anyway, uh, then next, whoop, sorry, uh, you'll see under each week, all the assignment the, the items in in italics here in some many of them in caps that's from the school that's not my stuff but that's just deadlines registration information etc mine is here under uh video so you, the welcome and syllabus overview which is what what you're watching right now uh then you're going to read in the first week for example chapters one two and four uh, this week, and that's it'll be pretty typical. Is about three chapters a week, and then we'll get down to two near near the end, uh, because there's 19 chapters to cover in uh, six weeks or whatever. Then the assignments. Now, I did want to so personal introduction speech video. This is what I'm now calling my "Hi, my name is" assignment. It's just a short video. I posted one. You're going to post one. Just getting you know, to know you a little bit and being able to know each other. Uh, now, notice I have a lot of these saying self-introduction speech assigned. That means nothing more than the instructions are posted and you should read them. All these you can find in the modules. Uh, read the assignment instructions so you know what's coming up and then it will usually have a due date. So you're going to read about the self-introduction speech. That's different from this personal introduction speech. Uh, but it's going to be due in week three at the end of the week. So this just means, even though it sounds like a long list, it just means read the instructions. If you have questions, submit the questions so I can get back to you. But it's just giving you a heads up that that assignment is coming up. Same with um, your information speech topic. Uh, we'll be talking about informative speeches, and you've got to select a topic, whether it is the Statue of Liberty, uh, the San Francisco Bay Bridge, the uh, Great White Shark, the Kansas City Chiefs, whatever it might be. Uh, you got to select a topic. Is that then gets you thinking? Because you can't do anything, you can't research anything until you select a topic. So don't worry about picking the perfect topic. It's better to pick a topic and get on with it than it is to wait too long and uh, waiting for that perfect talk. Remember what I said, uh, prepare early. So get going on this speech. It's due uh, in a short time. Okay, you're also going to um, submit a rough outline of your informative speech by week three. This is where you're going to tell us your specific purpose, your central idea, your main points. Uh, and we're going to, you're going to talk about the specific purpose and central idea in, uh, in, um, the uh, chapter five next week. But so anyway, it just gives you a heads up that these things are coming. And then the informative speech is assigned. It's going to be in week four. So get on with it. Read chapter 15. Uh, if I, can, I have it in week two, I would read it in week one. Uh, in fact, chapter four is really brief. You may want to move reading, speaking to inform up to week one. Just a suggestion to get you moving. Okay, then week two, you're going to read five, six, and 15. And that's where you're going to inform to speech topic two. And I will send instructions in the announcements on how to submit so here's how you, I'll tell you in the announcements, here's how to submit your informative speech topic. So it means I know what you're talking about. You know what you're talking about. And you're getting on with the game. Okay. Week three, it has them there. And week three, you'll see your self introductory speech presentation video is going to be due. And then week four, uh, happy uh, 4th of July. But just understand life goes on. The assignment goes on, even though there's a holiday, 
and maybe the school offices are closed or whatever, but that doesn't mean that your work is not due uh, as normal. That doesn't affect your assignment due dates or anything at all. Just, you know, whatever. Okay, there is week five is there, week six, week seven. Again, all assignments are listed there for you in the chapters to read. Um, and then week eight is a shorter week because we are done on Friday, 731, 5 p.m. Uh, there will be the final exam on that day at four, a Wednesday. I'm doing a little bit early because there's no set schedule. And I tried to pick an earlier day so that you don't get bogged down with other assignments or other finals and other courses you might be taking. Hopefully that will be the only one on that day. Uh, and your extra credit stuff will be due. Uh, your outside speaker evaluation. Usually we do this in the first few days, but I moved it down here where there's less items due. And we're done. We're done on Friday, 731. Everything will be submitted. I will have a few days where I will accept late work with a speed score deduction, but it's all due and it's all over. And then I'll have your grades to you just within a, a few days. I will work feverishly to get that done because then I got to turn the corner and get ready to start the fall semester in the middle of August at another school. So anyway, I will get that done to you and back to you in a timely manner. Okay, so that is your syllabus. So I'm going to uh, please email me if you have questions. I'll shut that down and I'm going to stop the recording. And there I am back on the screen there in the corner. So anyway, so email me and I look forward to us getting underway.